Okay, welcome back to the uh, DJ with Ableton Live course. This is part five. Uh, so in the previous couple of videos in three and four, we looked at starting to incorporate some effects. We put the EQ in in uh, part three, and then we use some send effects, reverb, and the ping pong delay um, in part four. What we're going to look at now is just auto if you want to automate a um, an effect rather than actually performing it live. So this is useful if, I don't know, for example, you might actually want to be actually record your DJ set rather than performing it live, you know, record it and automate all the effects and, and so on, um, which is useful for doing it. There might be a, a specific bit of a song where you want to let a filter kind of gradually open up and you're going to use that every time you play that song. So if you've got it automated on that track, then you, you don't need to, to, to worry about it and think about it in the future. It will just do it by itself. Um, and obviously you've only got so many pairs of hands and as push isn't ideally designed to be a DJ controller, um, that's one way around of doing it. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. Um, again, disclaimer, I am not a DJ. Okay, I'm just showing you some principles of how we can use push push one or push two. It's the same for both uh, and Ableton to DJ. So we're going to do it on my track, uh, which is called Found. So if you just play the first bit. Okay, so we get this kind of drum intro, which I think goes over about eight bars, if I remember rightly. Oops, I'm to drop out there for some reason. Anyway. Okay, and then bar nine. Okay, we get like a little lead line that starts to fade in. So, I don't know, for a, for a track like that, what I might want to do, kind of drop out all the low end um, and gradually kind of bring that in on a filter to then kind of bang, come straight in with the kick drum fully on bar nine. So we can do that very easily with the auto filter. So we're going to drag him down here. Um, and we're going to use a high pass. Okay. So a high pass is that shape. So basically a high pass just lets all the high frequencies pass through. So anything that's in here will pass through. Anything that's in here will be cut out. So we're going to want it to sound something like this. So it's going to start up there like that. And then that's going to gradually open up till we get to bar nine. Now the great thing with um, automating is if I go over to this view you can see this is our envelope for our filter and when you if you're kind of opening up so this is all the things that we can automate all our devices and then this is all the settings on that filter and there's quite a lot so if you're not entirely sure which bit you're supposed to be automating all you got to do is touch it on here. So let's say I was going to automate that. Okay, just click on it, go over here, and it will automatically put it in this box for you. So we're going to be doing the frequency. Okay, and we're going to start with it pretty much up at the top there. So that's the last thing I clicked. Sorry, wrong button. If we go over here, okay, it's now got my frequency in here. So I'm going to start pretty much right up at the top. And we want this basically to open up and come right down the bottom here. So we're going to click the break point there. Let me just put one. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Oh, I've got two. Get rid of that. Okay. And that's going to go down roughly to sort of the end of bar nine. But you can see I'm not going all the way down to the bottom, right? That would kind of basically just open the filter up completely. We're going to go to about there. So it's going to gradually come in. And then when it gets to bar nine, it's going to instantly. Um, kind of cut off and the easiest way to do is just to turn it off so if I just click off and on again we've now got the on off thing here so the accurate because we want it to turn off so at the moment it's on okay and then we want it to turn off there okay just so you could go kind of zoom in and get it as close as you can. You want to make sure, obviously, if, if it's there, you're not going to get the full effect of the kick. So just you know, a fraction before would be absolutely fine. So if I go back to this, you'll see all these automation things working now when I play it. Okay, so you can see our frequency. Opening up, this one's moving. When it gets to bar nine, it will turn off. Okay, so then instantly it kind of brings the kick in. So almost like I've remixed the song a little bit because it's like it's taken out the kick on those first eight bars, which is great for your transition thing. So if you know you're going to have an eight bar transition at the beginning of that song, 
automate it like that and uh, happy days you, you don't need to worry about having to use too many fingers and thumbs and whatever to uh, sort your filters out so yeah quick little little uh, tip you can use uh, to automate on a filter um we got to remember is anything that has a little orange thing next to it there means it's got some automation on it oh well, short and sweet this one uh, but hopefully useful um please like subscribe comments as usual if you've got any suggestions for any future videos uh then let me have them i will do my best to sort those out can't guarantee i'll do all of them but i'll give it a go uh if you're feeling generous you can give me a little paypal donation uh, there is a link in the description or there is a uh, link on my uh, what's a pedder on my header a pedder is a page header all in one go so on my pedder which is now going to be my new word okay it's not a header anymore it is now a pedder uh, there is a link to it in there on my PayPal thing, right? I'm going off on one again. I'm rambling as usual. So I'm going to leave it there. I will see you in part six. Thank you very much for watching.